Hey folks, welcome back to uh, After Work Gaming. We are back for more interrogation. Now, last time we finished off by reading through these various reports and documents. Uh, except I don't think we checked out here. Oh, we did not. So this is like our little conspiracy red line uh, cork board about all our cases. Look at that. Miss Peterson was found dead in her house. And then Daryl was the murderer, and that's how we found out about Liberation Front. Uh, then we found out that there's a chat room, and Fred Ennis, or Enos, uh, confessed that he collaborated and he gave us the password. So Liberation Front is known to communicate using internet chat rooms. The online presence of the Liberation Front points towards a substantial number of sympathizers. Internet chat rooms are the only communication method identified up until now, but many more might be in use. The Liberation Front is a young movement organization whose anti-authority rhetoric is gaining increasingly more traction. It is centered on the city, but spreading through the whole country. And the Liberation Front believes the world's current power structures are oppressive and need to be taken down by force. Okay, back to my office. And let's move on. Jennifer, so, uh, hey boss. I wanted to clear the the water about some stuff that I don't know whether you're even aware of or not. I wasn't aware that clear the water was a phrase. Uh, Chief Lucas was looking at the two of us to see who should head up this task force. Uh, I guess you acing the Peterson grill made it a done deal, and I can't say I blame the Chief for that call. Uh, bullshit rumors fly really easily, so just wanted to reassure you that I'm fully on board right behind you. Uh, after all, the best leaders are also the best followers. You watch yourself. Uh, I have no idea. I told the chief, give it to you. Nope, that's just pandering. Thank you for the reassurance. Step up your game. Kind of a backhanded thing. Uh, glad to hear it. Let's do be let's do good work. Whoever's managing this, bam. 10-4, boss. 10-4. Uh, don't let the door hit you on the way out. My door is always open. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be at my desk. Cool. Uh, Jennifer, I've been at it for a while now, and I've managed to figure out what most keywords mean. Tab, the algorithm managed to confirm some of these deductions. There are some conflicts, though, either because of cognitive biases or of algorithm errors. The your cognitive biases is what you're saying. Jennifer, it's hard to figure out specifics, but we have some broad findings. Uh, the folks in the chat room are just a wing of the whole operation, though. Uh, and I think I've stumbled onto something big. The South Bank Mall, something today, the planting of a package. Jennifer. You don't clear the water, you don't know what a package means in the context of a terrorist group? Anyway, in front of the Duathlon store, apparently they'll have someone there. I'm not sure what they're supposed to do, though. Tab, we should have the place canvassed ASAP. Let's move. Uh, we have three suspects in custody. One of them can potentially be our perp. Uh, Jennifer, the only three we noticed to linger near the Duathlon store. Mordecai, that is, before the three of them got tangled up in an incident, and we had to intervene. Yeah, this is a detailed in the file I drafted up on the way here. Uh, Jennifer, one of them is the one working on the Liberation Front's orders. Has to be. I've checked the chat room again. I now think they're dealing with a planted bomb. Sweet baby Jesus, we're on the clock, boss. Yeah, lives are at stake. We need to the explosive device's location. Alright, thanks everybody. Okay, incident narrative. The only three people present at the location specified by the secret chat room conversations were brought in for immediate questioning. As our officers were arriving at the scene, two of the individuals found at the scene were involved in a conflict. Daniel Wilson, a security guard working within the commercial complex, forcefully apprehended Bakil Madonna and exposed that the latter individual carried a concealed firearm. The third individual, Samantha Lowe, was seen talking to Daniel Wilson by our agents as they were arriving at the scene, just prior to the subsequent conflict between Wilson and Madonna. The chat room conversation revealed that at least one of these individuals was due to signal the successful planting of a time bomb at a nearby location by being present and seen on the walkway. Experts estimate that the location of the bomb must be extracted within minutes if the bomb squad wants to disable the device in time. Hey, okay, Daniel Wilson. Daniel Wilson is a retired Marine. He takes care of his ailing mother and struggles to keep up with the escalating medical bills. Uh-huh. He was operating as a security guard at the location of the incident and is one of the three people at the scene who could have planted the bomb. He is the person who apprehended Bakil Madonna as he was attempting to leave the premises. Wilson appears to be a close friend of Samantha Lowe, who he was entertaining before getting involved in the incident with Madonna. Wilson frequently visits Christian conservative websites, is an active uh, supporter of gun rights, and firmly opposed 
to political correctness. Uh, suspect bio, Samantha Lowe. Samantha Lowe is an interior decorator and animal rights activist. Engaged to be wed in a month, ISP enforced tracking shows that her IP has accessed Liberation Front content pertaining to claims of oppression of man and beast. She was engaged in conservation with Daniel uh, in conversation with Daniel Wilson at the time of the incident and was one of the only three people at the scene. She was in, she has increased premiums on her bank debts with the bank threatening to cash the mortgage uh, cash the mortgage on the flat she shares with her fiance. Bakil Madonna. Bakil Madonna arrived in the country on a student visa 7 years ago. He enrolled to study material engineering but has no record of attendance after his third year at the university. Past the visa's expiration date, he seems to have remained in the country illegally, likely working on the black market. There are very few official records of his activity since. He has been sending regular payments to bank accounts in his home country. He was one of three people at the specific site, or specified site. Within a developing situation, despite being summoned to not leave the premises, he attempted to flee. He was stopped and held by Daniel Wilson. Okay. Bring him in. So, here's my thought. He looks pretty good to me. Because he um, is an inside job, right? He has access to pretty much the entire mall since he's a security guard. And he has an ailing mother. So, money, motive, all that stuff. Uh, we'll set aside the whole Christian conservative thing and gun rights and whatever. That's just in line with what's-his-face that killed his wife. Uh, because he espoused some of these, like, really, you know, I need my freedoms, I need the this, I need the that's, and the immigrants are ruining everything. So, if that's the theme for this game, that's gonna be this guy. Uh, Bakil, you're the red herring, because you got the gun, and you're just a minor criminal, because you're here illegally. And you are just random. I mean, you have some connection here, but I don't think you actually did anything. And Oppression of Man and Beast sounds pretty much in line with the pet care forum. Okay, so let's talk here. Why'd you run away from the security guard? Yeah, let's start with him and then we'll come back here. Uh, maybe because I had an illegal gun for my protection tucked away on me? Uh-huh. What were you doing at the mall? Shopping, as people do. And the gun? I got it for defense! I have to live in a very dangerous neighborhood. We'll just confiscate the gun and not charge you, but you need to help us. Yeah, let's open it up, right? Because we're sort of on the clock here. Sort of. We are on the clock here. Uh, thank you. Boom. Um, listen, I want to fill in your file a little. Like what? You live in a city? Hey, in the slums, yeah, where it's cheap. Got any family? Not in the country. Back home? Eh, just poor farmers. My uncle works in a department store. Eh, any terrorist? No. Do you send the money? Uh, when I can, so rarely. Okay, let's go back. Where are you employed right now? Odd jobs, nothing official. How did you get into the country? Student visa, now expired. Not gonna contact in for immigration, but work with me here. You'll be speaking to me after this if I don't get what I need. Yeah, work with me, ma'am. Thank you, I will. Okay, he's pretty open now. Let's... What are we doing in the mall? A few more things about you. No, nobody cares. Do you know the woman? No. Have you heard of the Liberation Front? No, of course not. I, I only heard of them from the news. What do you think about them? Uh, they are what happens when a culture's dreams become a nightmare. Really? What would you say the Liberation Sun stands for? For the disillusioned fools that think violence might be salvation, it's not. They actually stand for equality, they stand for state dissolution, the dissolution of authority. Isn't that a noble ideal? Um... And for equality, let's, let's see, let's just push it, right? And for quality, ideal, perhaps, but many ideals may be overturned. Okay. Do you want to just ask the question? He's pretty open. Where's the bomb? I sincerely know not what you mean. That's a really strange phrase. All right, fine. Danny. Danny, Danny. Let's talk about that guy. Maybe you locked up that asshole. Yeah. To begin with, what did you notice about him being suspicious? He was being shifty, just that look in his eye. Don't you ever act on instinct? Uh, are you kidding? You think I read these papers? I follow my guts all the time. Instincts are deceitful, I follow the rules. I do what's necessary on a case-by-case -case basis. And I did the same. Nice, okay. We're gonna open him up with this whole... 
like, vigilante Rambo thing. Why act on your own? Why not call the police? My training kicked in. I thought people were in danger. Well, good work, soldier. You got a bad guy. Boom. Thank you. Okay. Now. Woman, who was she? Have you heard of Liberation Front? Let's just talk about you a little bit, yeah? You have my file? Um, okay. You live in the city? Born and raised. I love this place. Any family? Just my mom. She's probably worried why I'm not home right now. You live with your mother? Yes, I do. She's sick, so I take care of her. Medical bills must be expensive. I don't want to talk about that. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Where are you employed? Uh, at the mall. I work as a security guard. You work at the shop in front of where the incident happened. I read in the file that you're a former soldier. I can make sure you never find working in our... You work outside? Well, no, actually. I was just passing by there. I'm posted two floors down. Right. You're a former soldier? Former Marine. I used to be in the Marine Corps. How'd you become a soldier? A duty to protect the great country and the things in it. Uh, why aren't you on active duty? I, I has to be pulled out. I couldn't be away anymore. I had to stay home. Because of his mother, almost, po almost, or most likely. We thought soldiers were like cops, except that they don't do anything useful on a typical day. <laughs> uh, did you work with explosives during your time in the military? Uh, yeah, grenades, C4, all sorts, basic training. Doesn't your sense of duty extend to the people that might be hurt by the terrorist plot? Boom. Of course it does. Okay. Where did you say you were employed now? Okay, so we explored this area. Let's talk about... Do you know why you're here? Basic question. I'm assuming it's about the guy I put down at the mall, right? Uh, it's about a related investigation with much bigger stakes. You're the main suspect in a terrorism plot. I expect you for cooperation. No. Um, um, what, what related investigation? That's classified. But we suspect you might have crucial information. It's related to a criminal group, uh, active in the city. Someone planted a bomb and we need to find it. Uh, do I have your attention now? Let's go with classified, right? Let's do a little intrigue here. Mostly because he's a former soldier and he might be into that nonsense. Ah, so you guys are spec ops, see? Man, understood, ask away. I don't know why you think we're spec ops, but okay. Um... Talk about the Liberation Front. Oh, no, close down a little. Yeah, I read something about him. What do you know about him? They're a bunch of murderous psychos. Yeah, everybody who works for them says that. What would you say they stand for? Stand for? They're just anarchists. They stand for nothing. Uh, they actually stand for personal freedom, an absolute form of it, isn't that idea? Yeah, this guy seems like. Stand for quality. State dissolution, dissolution of authority. Well, he doesn't like- he's like, I uh, don't follow the rules, right? It's one of these two, one of these two, one of these two, one of these two. Isn't that a noble ideal? Yeah, what do you think about overthrowing the government that you fought for? Uh, personal freedom has to be the one, right? Yeah. Freedom is great, but these fuckers don't care about anyone's freedom. Fair enough. They're pretty open now. Were you forced to cooperate? No, what sort of question is that? Fair enough. Tell me about that woman. Just someone I know from high school. Ah. They know each other. What can you tell me about her? Eh, not much. Well, how do you know each other? Yeah, we were classmates. She helped me pass chemistry in my senior year. What was she doing there? Well, um, I called her. Wanted to talk to her. Ooh, hello. Some things just don't add up, Daniel. Like What? You told Samantha to come to the exact spot where we knew a terrorist would be, away from your post. Must be some kind of coincidence, maybe your intel is bad. Okay. You are really, really close, man. And we're at three minutes, and each of these takes off five? Okay. We got 15 more questions. About the man, about the file, about the woman. Let's just ask the question. Where's the bomb, Daniel? I- Oh, hello! I... I had to. I'm sorry, they forced me. Okay, before we do that... <laughs> right? Before we do this... Hey. Um... What do you know about the Liberation Front? I got some time. Let's just burn some questions on story. Uh, they are that terrorist group, right? Yeah, what do you think of them? They're awful, right? Right. Good take. What do you think the Liberate... Or let me take... Let me tell you what this Liberation Front stands for. Okay. 
They stand for, I just want to use this. Yeah, overthrowing the government. That is not true. Society cannot function without a system of rules. Fine. Were you forced to cooperate with them? It's going to be completely unfair to her now. What? Of course not. Do they do that sort of thing? Such terrible people. You went to their website. I have some questions about you. Oh, hello. Were you and him, were you and Danny, uh, friends? No, his mother was very sick and he didn't socialize that much. Didn't interfere with his schooling? Yeah. I tried to help him with schoolwork, but he had to work at a job, too, since her insurance didn't cover her cancer treatments. And that's rough. Okay. Reliving in the city. Any family I should know of? Where are you employed? I work as a freelance interior decorator, right? So no reason to be in the mall. Any family I should know of? Um, other than my fiancé, my dad and sister, no. Is your sister... Oh, God. Is your dad well? Just fine, sure. Fine. Oh, well, two minutes. Let's just do this. Is your sister as pretty as you? They frown, clasping their fists. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> Live in the city? Yes, with my fiancé. Yeah, 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 okay. I have some more questions about you. Tell me about the incident at the mall. Do you know why we brought you here? Tell me about the mall. I'm going to leave at 1.30, so we got three more questions. With Danny and the guy? Okay. Did you notice anything suspicious about Mr. Madonna? Why were you and Mr. Wilson up on that floor? Yeah, why were you up there? He said he wanted to talk about something. Confess, I think he said. Well, we never got to it. Do you two know each other? Yes. Well, yes, of course. We, we went to high school together. Hmm. Do you know why we brought you in? No, not really. I don't know anything about any of that stuff. You're the main suspect in a terrorism uh, investigation. What? Me? How? What? It's not an accusation, at least not yet. This is why I need you to answer my questions fully and honestly. You're getting a little freaked out. They run their hands through their hair. I I will, but... But I didn't do anything. Yeah, you're right. All right, let's go back to Danny. So she was a complete dead end. He's the red herring. And it's this guy. You better... <laughs> you better fucking tell me where that motherfucking bomb is. Or I swear on all that is holy that I'll shoot you right here. Through the mouth, Wilson. What's that? What is that threat? Look, whatever they did, you're not a murderer and there are dozens of lives on the line. Where's the bomb? Boom. They state shame in their voice. They, they said they'd take care of her mom. It's, uh, it's on the fifth floor. Shala's Bit Store, third dressing room on the right. Boom. Solid. Evacuation started as soon as possible. When the bomb squad reached the device, we still had plenty of people to evacuate. We successfully disarmed the device in time, saving dozens of lives. Uh-oh. Then the news started coming in from all around the city. Two other explosions happened close to the same time ours was set to set to dozens of casualties. Dang. Way to go, Jennifer. Dang. STPD press release. Continuing on investigation into the group known as the Liberation Front, the Peace and Stability Special Unit apprehended and questioned several suspects identified through Liberation Front online chat rooms. Right, now, we, now we're officially telling them, huh? These suspects have been linked to... Potential terrorist activity. Plan targeting civilians by detonating an explosive at the South Bank Mall. Potential terrorist activity. Don't... You're gonna destroy them all. Daniel Wilson, male, 27, a security guard, has confessed his involvement and has been arrested, awaiting prosecution. At this point, we are working under the assumption that... He was working alone. He was part of a large terrorist cell. Now he's part of a cell. Unless, do we want to misinform? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, they was a terrorist cell. Now we're gonna we're gonna start pulling in information. A former Marine, his criminal acts were motivated by 
dangerous ideological beliefs, severe PTSD and mental trauma, blackmail and threats made against his family by the front. Boom. At the same time of his arrest, we were not aware of, no, we were tracking down, we knew about other potential bombs being placed. We were tracking down. Don't say we were not aware of, and don't say we were aware of, because either one of those is going to get us, like, snookered. We are doing everything possible to neutralize other threats that may be active at this time, and ask the public to remain calm. Avoid public places. Inform us of any suspicious activity. Boom. Suspicious activity. That's what I want. Continue. Yeah, let's do some admin. Mordecai, jeez, sorry boss. Yeah, you should be sorry. Jennifer, why are you apologizing? It's not like it's your fault. Or ours. I know, I know, it's just... I feel like we're somehow responsible. Yeah, well, we are the department charged with stopping the people who did these very acts. So, we certainly have some responsibility, if not all of it. Not all of it, but... Trying to stop murderers, that doesn't make us in any way responsible for the murders. We're responsible for not doing our jobs well enough, let's do better from here on out. Blood is on our hands. Uh, now let's do our very best to keep off... Uh, anymore. Trying to stop murderers, that doesn't make us in any way responsible. There we are. We didn't figure it out in time, guys, okay? Well, let's... Buckle down, Chief. Good evening, everyone. We need the room, please. Oh boy. I have someone here from City Hall to talk to you. Uh, greetings, Detective. My name is Tristan Miller. I assist Mayor Patel. Uh, I've discussed- I've been discussing things with Chief Anderson for a few hours now, but I wanted to directly address you, too. These deaths, obviously, they don't look good for any of us. Well, we're relying on your task force to end what is surely the greatest threat to the city, this Liberation Front. Uh, can we count on your team to achieve this, to make the city safe again? can. Liberation Front will be shut down. We'll do our best, but we just don't know how deep their network runs. Can't offer any sincere guarantees. We may need more resources to have any chance in dealing with them. We'll shut them down, baby. Can't say that we're underfunded. And plus, Chief is right there. Kristen, find the bastards doing this as soon as possible. Consider it done. I'll get my team right on it. We'll do our very best. I just hope it's enough. The sooner you get out, the sooner we can get back to work. No. We'll do it. Yeah. Look at that guy and his smarmy thumbs up. Okay, pick an old memory. Framing artist. You have mastered the cruel practice of framing your subjects for crimes they have not committed, and you can press the accusations to your advantage. They always say the drugs aren't theirs. Sometimes it's true. Requires intimidating press, that's fine. Scholar of anatomy. You know how to make your subjects endure more physical punishment before they pass out. Me hurt you long time. Oh my god. You always follow the procedure, right? We read that one. We re uh, Speed Demon, you have more time to interrogate but cannot access files during or before it. No. Half the fun is the files. Intimidating presence is the thing about. Um, yeah. Uh, you can use threats and such with Profiler. Reading reactions and emotional states is a science to you. You have an exact evaluation in numbers of how fearful and empathetic the subjects are. Hmm. One of these two, so let's do this. You have mastered the use of threats and silence to cow your subjects. A dog that barks... ...is a dog insufficiently boiled. Hmm. You'll always follow procedure and are known for it. Subjects have more empathy towards you, but you have trouble... ...frightening them and cannot use enhanced interrogation. No, because we're... We might have to frighten someone. This feels like a useless perk, no? This is too big. So, more empathy, more fear. See just how well we're doing. Let's do this. Mostly because I don't want to limit myself in one way or the other. Okay, now we have money. We have $3,000 to uh, do something here. Okay, pursue the informer, hit the streets, talk to people, try to find someone that has an intel line on Liberation Front. I always want to do that to the extent we can. Uh, work with the DA. Bring charges to the animal care chat room hosts. Have them pay damages at least for facilitating terrorist acts. Oh, no, who cares? By the book. Make sure everything's done by the book. Married up the detailed reports. Do the paperwork. Get all the permits. Volunteer in the other department. How about uh, other department deal with their workload? Wait. 
We just had two bombs blow up that we didn't know about. How, how are we spreading our resources after that? Consult explosive forensics. This is what I want. Uh, explosive forensics department on the likely materials that were using the bomb. I want that. Formulate some budget requests. Boring. Go home. So work with the DA. Pursue informers. Okay. Volunteer another department. Formulate budgets. Okay, Mordecai, you are going to consult with my forensics guys. Um, Jennifer. Got it. Jennifer, you're going to pursue informers. You are going to... Get some extra money in the budget? No, do the paperwork, get all the permits and confiscation confirmations needed. I don't know what it does, but let's just try it. Uh, yeah, and then maybe tomorrow or something we'll send you guys home. Now we have 3,000. Let's order another HR report. I don't care about the PR report per se. Reward agents for a job well done. It is not a job well done. We had two bombs nobody knew about. Civil forfeiture over time, R&R team building. But we do need a little downtime. See you overtime. Assign overtime to the agents in order to participate in a community outreach program. Informer stimulants. Yes, let's help out Jennifer with the informants. Therapy. Book a session with specialized therapy helping law enforcement officers deal with the stresses commonly encouraged, encountered in the lines of work. We have five, five, uh, 500 and I have a thousand bucks. No, we have some R in our team building. Maybe next time we'll send, we'll put out for therapy. Okay, moving on. Jennifer, hey, boss. Huh? We're going to meet the others at Hannigan's. Uh, try to get our minds off this craziness for a couple of hours before it all starts again tomorrow. Want to join? Uh, no, no can do. I want to be fresh morning paperwork to get some paperwork sorted. Try to have fun. No, team building. Team building. Later that night. Hey, Hannigan's. And for psh, no way. <laughs> no way Louis XVI was a victim. Or if I had an uncle named Louis. There was nothing royal about that man. Yeah, I'm just saying that he was caught between the pressures of nobility and... No, 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 no. I'm sticking to my picks. Yes, MLK, Mary Leinhardt, kill Louis XVI. Definitely. Well, I'm confident Richie will make you many, many murderous crusader babies. Murderous crusader babies has a ring to it. Or a boss's turn. Right, let's see. Hmm. Kiss, marry, kill. Lincoln, Gandhi, and, uh, Thatcher. <laughs> All right. Yes, and Margaret Thatcher. Hmm. I'll be kissing Lincoln. The man deserves a good night at the the- Oh, my God. I think I'll be kissing Gandhi to see him do the chastity squirm. Oh, and I have to kiss the Iron Lady. So it's... Yeah, there you go. Um... Man, because I gotta kill one of these guys, right? Ooh, rough. You gotta be Lincoln. You gotta be Lincoln at the end, because, I mean, man's a tragic figure. Uh, do 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 Gandhi had that whole... That whole mm. Alright. It's Gandhi. Not for the chastity squirm, but for other strategic reasons. I'll marry Lincoln. Seems like he'd be... <laughs> he'd be there for me. Definitely want to end up a baron. Well, that's not really the reason, but... Thatcher, because, you know... Provider. And then... Uh, unfortunately, kill Lincoln from behind, I imagine. <laughs> exactly. Okay, next round's on me. And for we're back from looking into one of the explosions. Uh, office building triggered after hours. Still eight dead and twenty in the hospital. No relevant witnesses off the bat. Mordecai, we've spoken to the explosives forensics, and it's like this: big boom took place on the thirteenth floor. A large quantity of explosives material would have been required. That floor was closed, unpopulated. It was set to be refurbished in the coming months. We're going to head out again, canvas for witnesses, see if we can find any surveillance. Hey, chief. Things are not looking good. We're receiving actual complaints from the general public about your leadership. My lead- what? Get your act together. Spurred on by the front, who knows what these people might end up doing. That is all. 
Excuse me. We had two bombs go off that nobody knew about. Not my problem. Popularity, how much the residents said he trusts your department? Well, I mean, we didn't have two bombs explode. Press approval. How friendly the journalists are who write about your investigations. Uh, and then... The authorities, how reasonable the institutions of the city are. And so, success all around. We managed to find enough resi a residue to determine some of the bomb's exact components and features. Uh, we are even reached out to her, but we've got a lead on a girl whose boyfriend might be involved with the Liberation Front. We can try to convince her to talk to us. And by the book, the chief called in to say that they appreciate the balanced books we keep. Okay. Uh, let's start with the newspaper, The Herald. Freedom Fighters, exclusive interview with former LF member. Also by Patricia Becker. Whoa, Patricia. Continuing our series on the so-called Liberation Front, we've done our best to track down anyone that might be able to give a first-hand account of what dealing with the Liberation Front is like. You can beat people, but you can't beat the ideas out of their heads. That's why the Liberation Front will never be beaten. That's the gloomy conclusion of the young 20-something Liberator after our brief interview. Eric is a former sleeper agent, an agent that has pledged his loyalty to the cause and is a supporter, but has not yet received an order to carry out an operation. These agents are usually tasked with reconnaissance of potential targets, scouting bomb spots and vetting new recruits. He joined shortly after the terrorist group's first manifesto released, although he says that we were part of the same group long before that, the oppressed ones. Despite the increasing interna uh, international attention and the concentrated efforts of authorities, little is yet known about the seemingly expanding terror group. Who is funding them? How large is their member pool? What are their objectives? Why is our city at the center of their attacks? Speaking through text messages and asking that his real name be concealed, Eric says that few members know this, nor do they care to know. There isn't a clear hierarchy. It's more obfuscated than that, I think deliberately, to make you feel part of the organic movement. You don't have some leader you have to salute or bow down before, and no one gave me orders. And that felt good, you know? Makes you really open, own up to what you do. Like you're, fire, you're the fire of the whole thing. Very eloquent in his responses, and with a surprising analytical view of looking at his situation, Eric does not give the impression of a fanatical warrior, but more, rather, a student activist arguing his case. His weaponized sense of ownership and empowerment is not a new thing, having been used by terror groups in the past as it is especially effective with the young. But Eric says the Liberation Front puts a different, more per persuasive spin on it, using the internet to bring its manifesto right into the potential members' homes. Their propaganda taps into the thing you already believe in, hooks itself into your feelings about injustice, inequality, discrimination, threats to values, and then slowly pulls you to action. It's not that your life is bad. It's not that your life is bad and you should do something to change it. It's bigger than that. The world is in bad shape and you need to take action. Needless to say, needless to say, violent action is the LF preferred course of action. You'll say violent action preferred course of action. Trisha. Not a great sentence. Eric says he is no longer part of the Liberation Front due to ideological differences, but he says he still resonates with them strongly. Once you cut through the petty words, you see that they are just influencing you towards their own ends. But at the end of the day, they are not wrong, are they? Look at the rich, look at the powerful, then look at you and me and our paycheck. Look at some poor single mother struggling to put food on the table, while a rich idiot stuffs his face on some polluting boat on the money he inherited. Really makes you want to do something about it. Ideology in the classic sense does not seem to be the unifying factor of the front, however. Eric recounts how he was put in touch with another member for a potential scouting mission. He quickly discovered that he was polar opposites ways of looking at the world. Not to beat around the bush, the girl was a racist, plain and simple. Not a tiki torch carrying type, but still. With the income inequality gap between the average workers and the richest growing, and situations such as the recently uncovered linked tax evasion operations spanning multiple countries, it is doubtless the Liberation Front will find fertile ground for future unrest on the most radical left. The radical right is also clearly looking for torchbearers ready to go the extra mile, and fundamentalists of all creeds want a new start for society around the world. The question remains, what does the Liberation Front plan to seed? Richard Becker is the editor-in-chief of the Heraldic she has been working as a journalist for the past 12 years, receiving numerous awards, both her editorial and investigative work. Okay. Well, we read this. This wasn't great. I mean, this right here. Uh, there's an uh, HR report. Motivation level high. Tab is moderate. 
variable motivation, confidence levels, they may fatigue or lack ownership in the team's endeavors. Well, she did fill out paperwork this last time, so... Okay, do we have anything new? No. Oh, here we go. At the age of 18, he was involved in an armed robbery attempted attempt targeting a local corner store. The robbery was stopped by the intervention of an off-duty police officer who was shopping there at the time, and a three teenager involved fled the scene, dropping the weapon. The gun was later traced as belonging to Mordecai's father, but the other two could not be identified. The prosecutor involved offered Mordecai a deal. Full immunity if he agreed to identify his co-conspirators and to stand witness against them in court. He accepted. No records of his arrest, arrest exist in his public record. Member of Omega Delta Phi fraternity. Several records of public disturbance, public drinking, and one account of public nudity involving riding a horse. Removed from his record when joining the task force. Go classified on tab. Okay. Okay, and that is it. Next time we come back, I guess we'll continue on. We have this lead, potentially, and we gotta do something to remedy the approval here, because this is terrible. Right? Obviously, people think we're pigs. <laughs> um, but we did just let two bombs blow up, and we gotta remedy that somehow and figure it out. Hopefully, that's the next investigation, and we will go from there. In the meantime, if you guys enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend. Let's me know that I'm doing something right. Let's me know if you guys want to see more of this stuff. If you have thoughts about this game, you think I'm missing something, you think maybe I'm going down a blind alley, uh, because I think some of this this game has somewhat branching, if not narrative, then it certainly has multiple endings. I'm pretty sure. Uh, then by all means, let me know. Leave a comment. And in any case, I'll see you all next time.